for the youth this evening. We also want to just kind of rec uh, say to you that tonight is our one year anniversary for Live from the View. This is our, um, we don't even know how many shows we've done, a bunch over the last year. They've ranged from music to visual arts to bourbon tastings. We've done a lot of great stuff. So please continue to join us on Thursday nights as we do more programming for you uh, live from the view, from Bellevue. So tonight I'm going to pass my microphone over to two incredible, wonderful people that you're going to enjoy this evening. Uh, we're going to start off with Kathleen O'Brien and we're going to go from there. I'm going to hold the rest of it as a kind of a surprise for you. So enjoy the show. Thank you, Glenn. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Live from the View. Yes, it's been a year that we've been doing this nonstop programming, and we started with this amazing artist, Lisa Jennings, a year ago, and now we're uh, at the one-year mark doing another amazing artist, and a lot of you in Nashville know her. Um, if you like my necklace, you will enjoy the entire evening, I'm sure. Nola Smodic, um, who is an artist, a jewelry artist, who uses all these amazing things from the found world that is in God's green earth. She uses stones, she uses gems, she uses copper, silver, gold. She uses insects, bugs, um, I guess that's the same thing. Leaves, <laughs> leaves, leaves pine cones, everything. And she crafts this into this amazing jewelry. And I had to have a cease and desist given to me. Don't buy any more jewelry. You've got enough. Anyway, she's in Shamai, which is down by the Loveless. She's in the First Center and she's in lots of other places. Please say hello to Nola Smodic. How Hi. are you? I'm well. You're beautiful and you're all bejeweled and thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Well, it, thank you for inviting us into this studio. She's used every square inch <laughs> of this room, which I think is a, a, a supposedly a, bed, a bedroom yes. in, a, in, in her it's home, um, as this highly efficient manufacturing with the fine hand of beautiful items that come out of here and they land on our bodies, which which I love. She does rings, she does what? earrings, she does keychains, she does necklaces, she does bracelets, um, all different types of things. So, and you wield all kinds of, of torches. You're a torch woman. Yes. You have to use all different types of heavy duty equipment to make these intricate, delicate, gorgeous things. Yes. So why don't you tell us about your jewelry? That one there is well, one of your first ones, isn't it? It's one of the first ones I did in my studio once I got my own torch. And it's a it's um a labradorite labradorite stone. I don't know if you can see the flash here, and I made a little dangle with a teardrop ruby. But I was proud of that because it's one of the first ones I did in my very own studio with my very own torch. Before <laughs> that, I was um, I was going over to my dear friend Hugh Bennett's house. You know Hugh. Yeah. And he's the one that kind of helped me along the path. He, he's always pushed me and encouraged me and challenged me. And he, he taught me how to um, weld and, and solder with it and wield a torch. And um, I... I wanted to um, start doing things and I would have, I would ask him to do it and it took him too long to do it. So <laughs> you said, wanted to do faster. <laughs> I said, show me how to do this. I want to set this stone and I want to do it this way. And so I would go over and use his torch and use his, his um, solder and use his, his tools. And um, after, after I moved out of the dining room into this room and made it my own, space and I could spread out. I got my own torch and it has changed my life because I'm a night owl. And so I couldn't go to Hugh's house in the, at um, midnight and be <laughs> hammering and, <laughs> and torching and things at his home. But um, so now I can just, I can shut the door and I can turn on my music or my podcast or my audio book and totally not look at the clock, which is my favorite day is to not look at the, the clock. clock yeah and, and be, just create and become immersed and oh what if I did this and what oh that didn't work or what am I going to do now and that kind of thing so I, I problem solve as I go along um 
but it's it's wonderful to be in my space and think about okay what do I want to do today and who who speaks to me and do I want to set a stone or do I want to you know use beads do I want to um, use resin do I want to you know make butterfly wings or four leaf clovers or whatever what do I want to do so it's it's kind of a game every day to see oh what am I going to make today or am I going to paint you know? well you've created such a perfect um, nest to for you to just settle in and let all of these things speak to you and you have so many things here to be able to draw upon for whatever mood you're in based on what you have in inventory right, right. so when, when I go into a place like Shamai Pottery one of my favorite places which is where I met you and your jewelry I I drool over things I just see not just your things but certainly your things but all this amazing art and my background is performing arts I'm not a performer just management but I know how important it is for people to understand behind the scenes it's you walk into a theater and you sit down and you, you enjoy this beautiful magical theater with wonderful performances, storylines, music, but how did we get there? Yes. It's the same with you. We see these beautiful items in the store that you've created, but we have no idea what inspired you to make it mm -hmm. or the process that you used. And tonight you're gonna show us some of that. Okay. You've got different approaches that you use with different mm -hmm. materials mm -hmm. tied to different visions and I think we should just jump in and you okay. start with whatever you think would be the best demonstration here um, to illustrate okay. how you go I about this. Do you want to show some slides? We can. Things? Why don't we do that? We can talk about we'll do that. that and then Matt, and if you could pull up the slides. So I don't know which slide we're looking at first. Um, great. So Matt, can you pull up the first slide in our Pretty little sunflower here. Did you make that? No, I God made that. <laughs> God made a lot of God made a lot of things to give her to start with. Yes. Just a moment. Okay, so Matt is Matt is working on getting the slides up here for us. So well, I can show you some of the things right in front of us. Here's a little butterfly that I've I um. I need to tell you first that I do not catch and kill any insects. <laughs> um, they're all, they all come to me. I find them already done using their wings. And um, so this was, this is how I do it. I, I um, collect. I think a, it shows better against the white. Yeah. There's, there is part of a spice bush. Oh yeah. Swallowtail butterfly. And, I use this little disposable brush and resin. A lot of people think, oh, you just pour resin or you dip it. No, I take this very tender little wing and I dip it and I paint the resin Gently. on yeah. and I very carefully. It's it's um, cicada. Yeah. It's a cicada wing, and wow. we're having another um, cyclical um, season, so we're going to have lots of cicadas. But this one has, I think, two coats of resin, and it's a little bit still flexible. But I will take and paint very delicately on one side and set it aside and so it takes me about an hour to do half a batch of resin and and brush it on and lay it down and wow. when it's cured i turn it over and i do the same thing so probably these and these wings probably have about six to eight coats of resin on them well, and now so, Matt has our first slide up. Okay. You want, why don't you talk about that? That was, um, that was, those stones were given to me by a friend. She wanted me to make something with the, um, with her boulder opals. And so I, I kind of sat on them for a while because I didn't know what they wanted to be, but I picked the, the larger stone up and I, I said, oh, 
it's shaped like a leaf. So um, I set it in a leaf shape and I made a, the, the, um, the silver has gone through a rolling mill. So it has a pattern on it. It is also kind of a leafy pattern. And I did a vine, um, a vine setting. And so that was one of my favorite pieces. And, and it went right back to my friend who, who owned the, the beads and, the, or the stones. Um, and she she loved it. So that was one of my favorite pieces that I ever did. Did you start working in silver before you worked in any other metal? Yes. Is that the best way to learn? Well, or is it just yeah. something that you enjoy? Yeah, you I just... wasn't. I'm not. A, I'm not afraid to try. You know, and even if I melt something, I keep it. I have a whole baggie of melted silver and all of my scraps because I reuse them mm. and I repurpose them into something else. And maybe when we get over to the other side, I'll let we can, you we can, we can, hold the torch and you can melt some silver. I can become a torch woman. <laughs> you can become uh, something a else to add to the resume here. Yes, all right. Yes, <laughs> yes. So next slide. Let's see what. Yeah, well, you can't. You two we're all going to melt silver. silver. Yeah, we're all going to melt silver. That's a combination of um, resin and painting and silversmithing. So the little circles, I made bezel settings. I made settings for. I soldered them onto um, a piece of copper. I riveted them onto a piece of silver. And then I inserted little scraps from paintings and then I put resin over them so that's like so many different things is resin painting soldering riveting polishing and um, so is when you put the resin on something is it hot temperature wise no because that would I, would I thought it might be and so I thought right. that that would be tough on something delicate like these um various cicada wings and butterfly wings and things like but it's not it's it's not it's a two-part and so you you have to sh you know stir it up very thoroughly and try not to get bubbles in it you don't you're right you want air. when okay. you do it and then because i do so many things on such a small scale that i spread it out with a with a um i did use one one time that got hot it was kind of my um as it was starting to cure it was my oh i better hurry up because it's going to get hot and it's going to set uh, this particular resin i use it does not do does that does not okay. get hot great well that's it just, beautiful it starts to just thicken up and and then i do it late at night so i have to leave um and go to bed because otherwise I would be over it going, oh, there's a bubble and I'd touch it and my hair would get in it or whatever. Oh my goodness. So it's my, um, it's my MO to, to start. Do it and about, then go to bed. Yeah. Start at about 1230 at night and it takes me about an hour and then I'm ready for um, a glass of wine in bed. <laughs> so when you come back the next morning, um, is it cured in the way that you had anticipated or does it change visually while it's curing? Um, it doesn't necessarily change visually. It's it, I have learned not to touch my pieces, but to touch my brush. And then if the brush is still tacky, don't touch the pieces. Because uh, you takes, get fingerprints. Yeah, it takes about 24 hours to, for it to actually cure to the touch and then several days before it's hard and it's you know it's really right. become so hard then so this one um and it can be worn without it can fear be worn without fear yeah. and i've started doing this too with these um i make a framework with oh yeah this feather um i made a silver framework and then put the feather in and put some little pieces in to just embellish it and this takes a lot of time time and resin and it's it's still not finished i need to put another coat on it and then i'll i'll clean up these edges and get it nice and um beautiful so what will that will be a pendant that will be a pendant gorgeous yes, yes. okay let's go to the next slide yeah. okay there we oh, go okay. there's a Ooh. there's a lovely turquoise ring and that is um it's a technique that I am 
have kind of, I don't know, I didn't see anybody else do it. I'm sure other people do it. But here's another um, turquoise stone. And I'm going to set it in this copper beautiful setting. But the copper setting, let's see if I can get this stone out. It's a nice, firm, tight fit. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's supposed to be. And maybe you might I, not want to undo I what will, you've worked so hard well, to do. I will need to, but um, oh, it's beautiful. I, I cut, I cut a strip out of this piece of flashing, and so the strip is much taller than that piece, and so I have filed it down and left these little tabs that will hold it in. Yes, it's really rough right now, and it's. It's in rough shape, but if you pan down here, here is a boulder opal that I cut with that same technique um, where I just, it, it kind of undulates oh, that's over gorgeous. And, and around the stone. And here's another piece, um, my piece of turquoise actually, where I let it fold over the stone in certain places and it's more fluid that way. It's not, um, it's just, it's more artistic, I think. It's a lot of work. Like, I probably have an hour already just in that, in that bezel. And there's no glue on this. So this is no. all being held in by pressure and yes. contained by this copper that you put around it. Yes. And I'll have to take the stone out because what I'll do is, um, is you know, use my tool over there to smooth this all out, get all the rough edges out, and then it will be soldered to a back plate. Mm, so it, okay. it will be a back plate, and so it can be a ring. Oh, that's going to be hard to figure out what to do that with. Yeah, <laughs> that could be a ring. It could be a pendant. On this oh, yeah. Um, it might have something else, but for, for now, that's an example of one of the types of um, bezel settings that I like to do. And I, I let it I let it go below the line and above the line, and it just kind of undulates. And to me, that's that's a more artistic oh, way yeah. to do it. I, I don't do it all the time because it's so much extra work. But but I, on certain pieces, like you probably are inspired. Yes. That, that's the only thing you can do to be happy it, is yes. to do that. Yes. And that holds it in, and it's secure. Um Sometimes I can do it with an open back and then that I'll do a little piece on the back side as well that will hold it in and you can see it from both mm -hmm. sides. So great. You know, yeah, that one I just I saw the little yeah. hole in to see the back of the stone. Right. So why this is beautiful. You could have left it solid. Mm -hmm. You chose to do that. So a person could see the back of it. Yeah, functionally it works either way. I think the back is pretty too. That's I've, gorgeous. I left the stone. Yeah. There back here, so you can. I kind of made a little brace and then wrapped around this little pebble and left that open. And then that's just a, a textured silver that went through a rolling mill to put that texture on. So. It just makes it more interesting if it happens to spin around while you're wearing it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. You, and, and that does. Uh, women it. who wear pendants know that. <laughs> yes. it, it doesn't ever stay still. Right. So this it moves one, with this you. This one spins around a lot, and it's it's pretty on the backside as yeah. well. It's got this um, pretty leaf texture, and I have um, I riveted, so my little gold rivets show. Um, so... This was a piece that I did um, for spring. It's Hope Springs Eternal, and I have little um, bezel set aquamarines. Do you do you give a name like artists do to paintings? Do you name um, all the pieces that you create? All of or them, just some of them. A lot of them I do. A lot of them I do. This one I I had the name. So. Something else that Nola does that uh, I think is just exquisite. Um, the jewel, the, the artistry and the beauty, it's not just limited to what you see from your neck forward. The backs of her, <laughs> her necklaces, where for me, I wear my hair down a lot. You're not necessarily going to see it, but when, when it does turn or if you wear your hair up, you get 
the wonderful back shot yes. of this gorgeous and this one oh my gosh just look at look at the back of this it's simple but it's gorgeous and it complements the rest it's part of the style it is it's beautiful become my little signature i guess i cannot finish a piece without putting a little a little dooey dobby at the, at the <laughs> well we notice we notice you know a little wrinkle. <laughs> I just, I guess I've just not ever been able to do it without, and this one is, uh, you know, you can hook it on any of those three to vary the length, but then I just, oh. I have to play with the colors with that as well. It's <laughs> beautiful. You remember the line from, um, oh shoot, I'm going to forget the, even the movie, shoot, the one with. Oh, the Southern movie with um, Julia Roberts was in it. Steel Magnolias. Steel Magnolias, yes. Um, what separates man from the animal kingdom <laughs> is the ability to accessorize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, well, to here we are. Yes. How about right. the next slide? Okay, that's a that's a cicada wing, and I put words in a lot of my um, my pieces. That was just a standard um, bezel that I didn't create, but I I I have tons of paper, and so I always lay my wings. I can get all my papers out. I have paper, paper. I have paper everywhere, and so I I lay it out, and then I I think about and that one that one in particular has the word rhythm. So I have a lot of dictionaries. Perfect for so this city. If yes. I use the word rhythm out of one dictionary, I can get it out of another one. And <laughs> and so I put I put words in my jewelry. Sometimes you don't even see the words. Sometimes they're hidden. Well, I have a, but, uh, another necklace that I almost wore, but I hadn't worn this one in a while. And I noticed for the first time on the back of it, the words going in a circle. <laughs> it's, it's like a, another lovely surprise. Yeah. So I am all great. that detail. Yes. So. Okay. Next one, Matt. Okay. That was a commission piece. Um, a woman that I have not met asked me to make something for her sister. Her sister had gotten her a bracelet. She wanted to get her sister a bracelet. Their mother passed away when she was, when they were in high school. And that is one of the only pictures they have of her wow. mother, their mother. So, I was looking for something really special to put that picture in. And I decided to use an old watch. Um, nice. not the, I took the face out of the watch and I put the, her mother's face in it. So I made a bracelet for the sister and then the woman that commissioned me, I just couldn't help it. I had to make one for her too. So wow. I, um, nice. I printed the, I printed it out. I reduced it down to size. I, mounted it in there i put resin over it and then i i put stones and accessories with it so i do a lot of i love projects like that where i can make something very personal for someone yeah. um i like to know what the birthstones are you know any any special interest i like to add that to so that was an it made it very precious of, for them yeah sure yeah next one yeah okay Next one, there we go. Okay, that was um, that was a fun piece, and I I posted that with the quote, um, the Leonard Cohen quote uh, about the cracks letting the light come in, because that was a that was a um, malachite piece. It was a good chunk of this piece, and and it it was broken when I brought it back from the jump show, and I had it for a long time, and I didn't know what to do with it, but. I decided to set it in this um, setting with the opening in it. And that was a really um, challenging piece to mine it all to up. Figure and, out, to yeah. figure out. You made lemonade out of lemons, I huh? Did, I did. <laughs> and that was that's always been one of my favorite pieces and it recently sold. So Molly, I hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Molly. Yeah. Shout out to Molly. Yeah. Okay. And there's a ring. There's a ring. Um, I'm a painter as well, yes. and I do watercolors. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of my paintings that I have on my computer, and I reduced it down itty, 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 bitty. And so that little tree is part of 
a painting that I did of a tree that was at Radnor Lake. And I've put it behind this wonderful agate stone. The stone Beautiful. has the brown and the blue. And I, I had no idea. But in the middle, there, were, um, there was a clear area. So I put the tree behind the stone. So you're it. seeing it come through like a yes. piece of glass. Yes, exactly. No. And then the stone doesn't have resin over it. So it's just the stone is the, stone is the, stone. the top side. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I have. Some and then you these. set it in silver, it looks like. Yeah, here's some more of these little stones that were really precious. And they're, they're just beautiful. Stunning. I don't know if you can see how pretty that is. That's gorgeous. But uh, anyway, I have, okay. I have more ideas to do with that. And I, I bought a bunch of clear stones so that I could do put the, my paintings do the approach, behind. Yeah. And let's see, where is that one? Here's one. Here's another piece that has one of my paintings behind it. It was a sunset with a tree. And that is behind a dendritic agate. Be nice if you could bundle it and sell the jewelry and the piece of art to the same Yes. Person. Yeah. So it just looks like a little landscape to me, and I, I put vines and birdies, and it's all beautiful. Fancy, fancy Look at that back. back. Yeah. And the, the paint from the painting, and the, the paint oh, yeah. is actually kind of orangey, but I it translated yeah. pink when I put the stone over it. So I that's put beautiful, it, yeah. Cal Sydney and um, this really wonderful um, terminated quartz with it, and so that's that's also one of my favorite pieces. I added some copper. Nice. So I use my my beads to complement what I do to set my stones now. That's gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's see another next story. slide, Matt. What that one's about. This, <laughs> these ears, I've been looking for them here in your studio because I was just curious to see. Those earrings are just amazing. Aren't so they great. So that's in resin. That's in resin. Did you use a mold? I have a mold. Okay. I have a mold. Um, finally bit the bullet and bought some really nice molds. And I, I go around and I gather all kinds of flora and fauna and, and, um, pour the resin in the, in the mold and pop it out and, I still need to clean it up and then I mount them on a, you know, I go through all my little bits and pieces and figure out how I want to hang them. So oh, there is cool. a matching necklace at Shemai Gallery. Right as we right speak. Right as we speak. Okay. The earrings sold, but um, uh -huh. I bet somebody might make more. If, if somebody bet, needed yeah. to have a pair, you somebody know, might make more. <laughs> it's spring. There's new ferns out. There you go. So, yes, yes. <laughs> Do you ever work with bark? I have worked with bark. Where is this? I might need to bring you some birch bark. I actually, this is oh, that's pretty. another technique that I use. It's um, precious metal clay. And I did a, I love birch trees, by the way. I'll get you some I birch. <laughs> love birch. Um, growing up in, in Northeast Indiana, we had birch trees. And we I tried to grow them here. And I can't, yeah, it's but, hard. Um, this, I did an impression of, a. I made a mold. No, of that's silver, right? Birch or of, of bark. Okay. I made a mold of bark and then I pressed or the precious metal clay is a clay that's embedded with silver. And then. Is that what that is? That is what that is. Wow. So I made an impression of. That's the, beautiful. Of the bark. That is just so gorgeous. Pressed my clay into it. So these are other examples of precious metal clay that I've done. Um, I don't know if you can zip, zoom in on that, but those are little birdies and a branch. It was a real stick. That's sweet. That is so sweet. So sweet your teeth hurt. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there, here's little birdies that I sculpted out of the clay, and then you fire it in a kiln. So, so that looks ring. like solid silver, but it's yes. clay. 
it's clay and when you fire it all the binders Make burn, it burn away and you are left with, with silver with precious with um fine silver it's so, not sterling it's fine silver so it's pure silver so it's when you that that clay that's got the silver in it is that man made it, so yes. it, so you don't find that naturally right okay right it is a product um and i won't i i loaned my kiln out for a long time and then by the time it was ready to come back to me i didn't have room for it but there's my kiln and i'm dying to make some, some more stuff. elements because now yeah. that i'm doing silversmithing oh don't worry about that i just don't want something that is oh. precious to break oh. <laughs> just get stuff on yeah okay um okay so now that i have my kiln you can do I'm it. I'm looking forward to making some more little birdies and leaves and who knows what I'm going to come up it's with. beautiful. But, um, what a neat yeah. process on that. Yeah. So that was, that was my, I would probably play with birch bark and resin as yeah, well. Yeah. But when you said bark, yep. it reminded mm. me that I have this necklace over here. That's pretty. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, Matt, so let's go next. to the next one. Okay. There's another, there's a, um, I have this wonderful sassafras tree right outside my window and, um, whatever insect it is, it makes lace out of these leaves and they're so gorgeous. And that was a necklace that I, um, I did in this technique where I made a framework for it. Okay. And I kind of, I put little balls on the side and I made this wonderful, um, necklace and, and there was a bubble in it. So I put a, a stone? I put an opal in it. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, put an opal yeah. in it, right? When in doubt. Yeah. 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 Cool. So, okay. Next one, Matt. Yeah. That was a gift for a friend. I um I'm not proficient at sawing, but I sawed out three different boxers out of silver and soldered it on. That's to intricate. Yes. And Very that is intricate. a hold your breath go to the chiropractor the next day kind of activity oh. <laughs> to um saw do you have a good workman's sex. comp policy yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> you talk to your boss yeah you might need one let's see the next one you can kind of zip through that was one of my hardest projects that was um another personal gift um for a friend's mother who has two daughters their birthstones are old one of them has two children, so one is a um, emerald and a pearl, and the other Aww. daughter has one child that has a birthstone that's an emerald. So I made um, a stone for everybody. And, it's like a mother's ring, sort of. It's a mother's ring with but, all the birthstones, and then the the spouses are the represented in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> How appropriate! <laughs> so um, yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. And is that, I, it's hard to see, is that on silver or gold? It's both. Oh. And actually, the stones that represent a female and the balls that are female are in gold. And the um, and the band is gold. And then the everything else is in it's silver. silver. So nice. it's a mix. I like to mix my metals. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Let's see another one. Okay, Matt. There's another butterfly. And resin I used resin butterfly and I used um an ammonite, a sixty million year old fossil, and that is what's holding it together kind of. I, I resin wow. it now, so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now, Next one, one, Matt. There's another um piece that I sawed a bird out of the back. That's probably my best saw job. <laughs> 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 to saw out that little um the shape of the bird out of the back plate. Um, wow. And then, yeah. So I, the, maybe the next slide is the front. This is kind of a reversible. Yeah, there's the front. So the stone was galena, and I used prongs to hold it in, and then the back had the bird. That's beautiful. Thank you. Let's see the next Okay. One. There's a, um, that's another one this of my is, favorite pieces. This is a statement piece. Yes. This is stunning. That was a, a left and right side the left top and the right bottom side of a luna moth and those <gasps> are so not cool. easy to come by and they're, no. and they're huge and i put a boulder opal on it and i finished it i and the, the 
the chain part had opals and um, appetite and aquamarine and just beautiful, beautiful stones. And I finished it probably 1.30 in the morning on a Friday and it sold on Sunday. So <laughs> I'm surprised it took that long. <laughs> <laughs> it flew so away. How wide from, from the widest point of the wingspan? How wide is that? Because that looks like um, a, a large piece. Probably the top wing is probably... I don't know, three inches. Okay. And then, you know, probably five inches, three to so five it, inches. It's a it's a large statement piece, it's a, it, but it's, it's still very delicate yes. and intricate. Yes. So you, you have a softness, even though you use materials that well, obviously the metals are hard, but you're you, you soften everything, you. which Thank is you. why I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next one, Matt. And there's another um our friend in California. Oh, Kate? Kate. Hey, Kate. 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 Did she buy that? She bought that. Oh, and my that gosh. one has a little teeny tiny key. And it, that oh, in the has, center is the yes, body. That one has the silver around it. It has the little key and it has beads. And it ha oh, it was just gorgeous. And she took that one home. So that's in California. Thank she you, she loves your stuff. And so does Karen. They were in town when TPAC produced. Um, or presented um, and co-produced part of the plan. Yes, yes. The musical with Dan Fogelberg. She yeah, yes. yeah. She's been she's bought from you many times. Yes. <laughs> and if she were in town, she'd be here tonight. <laughs> okay, next one, Matt. There's another. That's that same tree from that painting okay. that I, I just made larger and and it's set under a quartz. So, so all those little, um, for lack of better words, dots that are going awesome. around, how do you, how do you apply those little dots of silver that you just drop on or Not how do you do in it? In that case, that is a wire. That is a, oh, so a, you just a curve it around. wire. So I shape it to fit around the outside, much like, um, much like this, this, um, this piece. And then, so how does it get affixed? Is it soldered on? It's, Yes. Or, so if I get over there and, and get to work, <laughs> this is going to get soldered onto this back plate. And what are you going to turn that into? Do you know oh, yet? I think that's going to be a ring. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we're running a little we're, we're, okay. Time, we're, so we're okay. We're okay. We're okay. Let's, let's go to Matt. Let's go to the next one. slide. That might be the last one. It might be. It might oh, be. Okay. That is a just that's a little keychain with a four leaf clover in it. And that's it's, a resin? It's resin and paper and I have I have a gift for finding four leaf clovers. I just really do. My you get a little Irish in you maybe? Maybe. <laughs> Smotic Irish. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, Slovak. But um yeah, my my kids would be out playing baseball and they'd be out in <laughs> out, in, out in the outfield and they'd be looking for four leaf clovers. Well, so. you, you had a little oh, army. Nice. That's okay. You had an army working for you. That's yeah. good. Matt, I think that's the last one. If not, go to the next one. Oh, it's not the last one. Okay, oh, that's a beautiful bracelet. That was a bracelet. A woman sent me um, sea glass. And that was another one of my first pieces that I did when I had my own torch. Um, so I, I made these settings and I drilled holes in the back and I made open bezels so you could see the light. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, the centerpiece was a piece of pottery, I guess, that she found on the beach. So, so. you did not make the sea glass? No. It was naturally she, made? Yes, yeah. she sent it to me and um, it was just beautiful. My husband has a rock tumbler that um, we're, he's wanting to experiment not only with rocks but also glass. Yes. Yeah. And see what we can make out of that. Yeah, so, put it someplace where it's quiet. So where it's away <laughs> from you because it'll go for two weeks. And just rah, 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 rah. So once he does that, I'm going to need to bring him back over here so you can teach him how to make jewelry for me. Like All right. yeah. <laughs> Great. So do you think that's the last one? No, Matt, let's keep going. And I'm not sure if we're done. No. Oh, there's, a, there's another piece, a whimsical piece. Where I drew the bunny. And his little oh. ears are um, maple whirly gigs. <laughs> maple whirly gigs. <laughs> this time How year, cute. They're so pretty. They're, they are. They're pink they and are. green. It's and like pink. little lace. Yeah. Okay, I think that I was think that was, that was it. it. Thank so, you. Beautiful stuff. Thank you. Where do you want to go from here? Um, um, let's talk about some of these pieces I'm working on. Okay. So this one 
You have to help me decide what to do with it. It's partially done. I have a sugilite and a kyanite and a sunstone, and I have the bezels. These are not set. I hope they can come out, but it just shows you all of this has been filed with my little tiny files. This is this side is what it looks like when I solder the bezels on. Mm -hmm. It comes out and it's all black and ugly. And then the next step to to creating this is to file all around it. And so I'll file all around this piece. So do you do you clip to get some of the excess off or do you I'll, go right I'll into take, filing? I'll take my scissors and, and I'll cut clip, a little okay. I'll clip close. Um but then I, I go in and refine it with this. So um and uh, same thing with this piece. All of that I trimmed mm -hmm. it close but then all of this I used with file. So it takes a quite a bit of time to just refine it in that way. Um so this, I haven't decided if it's going to be a ring. Of course, I have little stubby fingers. It, it would be a beautiful ring. It would be a beautiful pendant. And yeah. if you could make two of them and make beautiful earrings. So I don't know what you're going to do. Gonna you got too many choices. I'm not going to make two of them. <laughs> oh, and you were asking about that yeah. one with that yeah. dot. Yeah. This one is individual little pieces okay. that I hammered. I made them out of scrap gold and hammered them flat and soldered them on. So soldering then, is how you get it. To and then hold. I soldered them on. Okay. And then I soldered them on. And then I dropped some. And then I made more. And then I soldered them on. And That's made a commitment. more. And soldered. Yes. So. Um, so you made this I, ring. I made this. How ring. many hours would you say you have in that ring? Um, six to eight. Did you make it for yourself? Um, you know, it fits me actually, but I have this problem of making things that fit me. I need to give you my size then. Yes. Well. That will fix that. Yes. <laughs> so, um, this one will probably be offered up for sale. This it's is a, a sapphire. It's a rose cut sapphire and it's beautiful. It's, it's got this wonderful wide band that tapers in the back, which is amazing. Yeah. And, um, I'm really proud of that one. That was it's, that was a lot of time. That's beautiful. On that one. And the and color each, in that is each just one gorgeous. of these was was soldered on individually, some more than others, <laughs> some multiple times. Is it hard for you, as the creator, to let go? Yes. Each one's a baby, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it truly is. And if something sells before I was done looking at it, my feelings are hurt. But it's, <laughs> Do you get visitation rights? That's um, what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I need to do, I guess. But um, anyway, this one I think might be a ring for like someone with yes. longer fingers than mine. So I'll have to that's decide beautiful. if I want to um, put a wide band like that. Or um, yeah. this is an example of a band that I soldered on. I did not make the leaves motif but i soldered that onto a band a band that i cut out of sheet silver so and i i sawed all this out this is this is gold on top of silver so it's a double um back nice. plate with this lovely mm. um it's actually uh, rose gold and so it shines through this um rainbow moonstone I see. Yeah. So I did it on that one, and then this this Laramar has another leaf motif on the band. That's beautiful. That's now, what beautiful. is that stone? That's Laramar. Because I I have a pair of earrings that are, look very similar to that, and I didn't know what the stone was. It's Laramar, and it's only okay. found in the Dominican Republic. Ah, uh, I got it from Scarlet Begonia, uh, okay. and so I wonder could if be. that could have been. Could be. yeah. I got them. Yeah. Very nice. So um, we can, I can show you a, a process where I put a patina on something and then um, buff it out. And then this beautiful Labradorite is going to go in here. And I drilled out little holes because it's so pretty on the backside, too. It's got yeah, such a flash. Iridescence. Yes. Wow. So I wanted a little of that so that when it's set that will show through but um I thought that I could show you the magic of liberal sulfur 
and um, darken it and then I'll buff it out so that little yeah. motif will um, will show up better. So, so I don't know if you've seen the comments coming in, but there's one from Robin Lassie who says your work is gorgeous. Oh, thank All the time you. it takes to, to create each piece definitely shows. Uh, Grant Roberts says that she is so talented. That is my son. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Ten dollars coming your way. <laughs> And, his and, and your and your check will be in the mail. <laughs> and uh, Gary Pinkerton says, "Beautiful work." Thanks, Nova. Gary. We have a model over here. I think. You're gonna have to check her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's gonna wear it out of here. Yeah. We'll know it. <laughs> and that so beautiful. Yeah. Okay, now what are we doing over here? So, this is my really stinky little talker. And I probably have a very um, non traditional way of doing it. I think you're supposed to mix it up in a bowl and dunk it, but I like to just press it on. It seems like I don't want it to go every, everywhere. So, I brush this stuff on. Just kind of want to move around here. And yeah, I'll do, I'll do this outside. So what will this do? This will um, interact, have a chemical reaction with the silver and blackening. So this is the blackening you were talking about? Yes. Mm -hmm. so put a patina on here. And what I'm going to do Get some water out so come into my blood. Lisa Jennings is a low. She's got a lot of work in her, her own collection. She's a huge choice to lower rocks. Thank you. So I'm going to. Here we go, Tim. All right, right. play with fire. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to heat my stone a little bit. Put this over here. I don't know why it's kind of um, kind of bubble up. There it goes. Yeah, I think this wonderful brown blue patina going on it. And I don't think I'm supposed to do this, but <laughs> here's the magic of this book. Okay, wow. Well, Smell it. Smells like not in the drink. I'll finish that in the black back here. But some of it is not dry yet. So while that's drying, do you want to make some, do you want to melt some silver? <laughs> <laughs> this melt some silver. This is like little, Girl Scout camp. Yeah, here's my little okay. thing of scraps. And this is how I make my little ball that I put on. I have I have so much scrap and then I just save it. Save and it, so yeah. when I want to put balls on something, you have them. I have them. Whoops. Unless and, they fall on the floor. And, you know, <laughs> How many little silver balls are on the floor in here? I <laughs> you can you just use a magnet rather than a, a broom, but, right? But it's not silver as a magnet. Oh, that doesn't help. <laughs> there you there go. There have been times that I, I I caught a ball off of something earlier today, and it went bing, and I heard it hit way over there. So yeah, we don't, we don't know where yeah, it is. We don't know where it is, but um. Here we go, blowtorch time. Who wants to play? I don't. I wouldn't know what to do. Okay, you gonna well, teach me what I'm to do? I'm gonna turn it on, and I'm gonna ignite it. And okay. I'm turn the flame down a little bit, and then you hold it on to one of those pieces of silver. Do I do just hold it back a little bit? Because that's the hottest part of the flame, and then just watch what happens. Look at it. See how it's moving. It's it is liquid. How does it know what to do? It's Look at that. And that's how it makes a ball. Yeah. That's going to be a big ball. Tell me when to back off. Um, you know, if I wanted to make some little creature out of it, I'd let you leave it like that. But it's usually, like back off. Yeah, usually I just leave it under the flame. Let's see where your flame is hot. I leave it there 
until it spins like the sun. But that one's really big, so it's going to take a while. Let's try it with this one. Am I at the right angle here? Mm -hmm. You're right. Here it goes. It's, it's magic one of the time. most fun no. things. Isn't that fun? <laughs> it is. And see, there when it spins, it's done. Okay, so, so we're done. Go to the next one. <laughs> but you want to back up about right there. That's your hottest wow. part of your flame. Oh, it's going to make two. That is just incredible. Isn't that fun? So it just recoils when it. it yeah. Okay. And you never know which way it's going to recoil. Right. So, okay, hurry up and dry. We'll let the professional take <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. So, and then I just, I either can leave them there or I can oh, quench them. And put them over in my little collection, but um, yeah, that was so. Good. That's how you make perfectly round balls. Yes, and the argentium silver that I use is really good at balling up like that. It melts splendidly. So this, let's see if I can rinse this off. And, uh, and what are you putting it in now? Just water, and I'm gonna baking uh, soda. A little baking soda will neutralize it, so it. Hopefully kills will, the acidity um, yeah and it will um stop it it will stop the progression the progression so i'll rinse it off like that and then it's this lovely kind of matte gray finish on it and then i'll try it off with my editor's towel here go friends yeah and see, then I don't want this to be all brown and black. And so I'll come over here and get my handy dandy little hand piece. Actually, I think this is a good one to use. Is that a Dremel? It's, it's like a Dremel. It's, it's, you know, it's got my little foot power, but it's, um, it's more versatile than a Dremel. It's so, like a dentist. <laughs> yeah. I can come along and clean this edge all up and make the make the silver shiny again. Look at that. It is magic. Actually, the polish, polishing prod process is probably one of the most time-consuming really? parts because for every single thing I make, there's a progression of oh, you do it in stages of different. You know, for mm -hmm. each one, I'll probably start with a red or a blue, and I'll go from black to green to gray to blue to pink to a final polish on every single thing. Whether it's a link in a in a necklace, and if there's ten links in a necklace, then it's I, ten times. Yes, yes. So let's see. Let's put it this. doesn't happen overnight. Right. Let's put this gray one in because what I don't want is for one of my little discs to get down in the groove crevices. I want it to go at the top. And so that's so. What is it removing when you do that? It's removing the um, is it's it the very top layer of the metal of the, of the metal that um, reacted to the liver sulfur. <laughs> so Lisa asked, "Are you buffing it?" I'm um, yes, I'm buffing off the top layer. I'm buffing off the top layer that reacted to the chemical. So if you're buffing it off, why did you do because it? Because I want the recessed parts to show more, and so it's more pronounced as a as you can see the. So you've got to get everything the way you want the little part to be. So you have to yes. take away or undo what you did just to have both. Yes. So I'll I'll go back and work on this some more. But that gives you the idea. Yeah. And yeah. I think I can go ahead and go um, 
about setting the stone. Would that be your next step? That is would be the next step. Setting the stone. Setting and the so stone. setting the stone, is that with glue? Is that with... No. It's all tension. It's all tension. Yeah. I'm using glue is a no-no. It's a no-no. Sometimes you have to cheat. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think... Um, but, but gluing would be considered cheating. Yeah. Yeah. From, from the artisan yeah. point of view. Because... You're supposed to have it done so well that it doesn't require fits that perfectly. Yes. So there's what it would look like before it's polished. Wow. And then what I'll do is take my little tools and tighten all this up to hold it in. Wow. So stunning. That'll be a nice little pendant. So and this love. is really about blending your aesthetics and your skills with how nature works, how yes. how you find these things and how you work with resin, how you work with the different metals. Um, those, those are naturally going to do certain things. So you learn how they function and apply them for whatever aesthetic you want to yes. produce the outcome. Absolutely. And you didn't want to call this magic tonight. <laughs> Because you're the, no, no, yes. you're the I'm, magician. I'm magic. You are the magician. Yes, yes you are. Yeah. I'm I, convinced. I'm magic. I, I think my my um, secret power is being invisible. But um, anyway, <laughs> because I like to just tiptoe around behind the scenes and make magic happen. Well, and, you do. This is um, purely magical. So anyway, yeah, it's 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 a wonderful. Is that wonderful. coal? This is charcoal. It's one of my, it's another Thing that I can I can solder on. So you would uh, the, the purpose for that is to add to a piece of jewelry. No. Or well, how do you use that? If I were um, I can solder on this block, this block, this block, or that. So you can solder on it. So the purpose yes. of that is to solder onto it. Okay. Yes, and sometimes see I can. It's got all these little holes, and so. If I need to pin something in place, got it. Okay, I'll hold it. But a lot of times, it continues to smolder after. <laughs> after <laughs> I'm, you, I'm like, you bring your what? super in yeah. and you, you like, drill on it. That smell? Well, you know, where's my sandwich? I bet you don't do that just before you go to bed. <laughs> no, in fact, I I walked over here and it's like, what? and it's like, it's got the little charcoal brick hat mm. thing going, you know, mm. and, and I'm like, okay. I think I have water right here, so I can. So it's it's messy and it's dirty, but it does um it serves its purpose. So Nola, yeah. um, do you have any relatives who were uh, before you who were artists and you followed suit? Or yeah. I see a picture of a lovely woman here. This is my mom. I thought it might be your yeah, mom. She's over there too. My father was a photographer, okay. and uh, we had a studio in the home, and I swore that I would never have a studio in my home to subject my children to people, you know, in, in the studio. Now, people do come occasionally, but in my house, you if you wore your pajamas to the kitchen, someone would come and need to use the telephone, and you'd be caught in the in, the, in your jammies. In your jammies. But my dad, the living room was a studio, and he was a photographer. He did weddings. He did portraits. He did group photos. And so we had people in and out of the house all the time. Um, and my mother oil-colored portraits before color film was used. <laughs> wow. She would have a stack wow. of sepia tone portraits that she would go in and oil color them and then I was fascinated because she would use turpentine on a pick and take out the white of or a, or a little um exacto knife and she'd make a little and that would be the sparkle wow. in her eye and she would do that or a man's tie with all these and I I eventually got old enough where she would say oh my this is giving me a headache. And I say, oh, can I do the man's tie? Because the smaller and more detailed, the better. And so I I oil colored photographs with my mom. Do you have some of them? No. Oh, <laughs> I I Nola. That's, I that's a shame. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she taught you not only 
a, a, a different type of art. And but she, patience. Yes, yes. the yes. dedication, the commitment. Don't yes. do this. Don't try to make a living out of this yes. unless you have to do this. Yeah. Because it's tough. Yeah. It's, she but, was a seamstress. She sewed. She. We would look at a pattern, and I'd say, "No, I don't want those sleeves." And she would, you know, we she, would design the sleeves. She would have been so. Uh, art flows through your family. Yes. What about your children? Um. Not yet. They have their own talents. You know, they're really <laughs> good. they're really good at math. I have one <laughs> son that's Grant is a weather forecaster. On TV, Great, and I have a. Son. They're good to have in the family, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. I've got a son that's um in marketing, and I've got a son that's in um the oil industry. So they all there do, yeah. They all, I guess. I would say yeah. that they're essential workers. They're es they are essential workers, <laughs> yes. and um, bless their hearts, you know. They, I would go to a gem show, and I'd come back, and I'd go, "Do you want to see what stones I got?" And they go. Okay, mom, and I'd be laying all my treasures out, and you know, I just probably bored them to tears. Uh, yeah, but, but when they become adults, then it's a well, different they, story. Yeah, yeah they're, they get they're appreciation. Adults, stones and name them, and go. My mother did stones. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you Cindy see wants to know what your average. What do you think? What's your average time on making a piece? Oh gosh, that'd um, be hard. <laughs> It's really hard. I mean, how um, about one of these necklaces? How? Uh, let's start with that. Maybe that would be different than rings. Yeah. Well. Or is it a particular process that takes more time? Well, it's the process. You know, if it's a resin piece, and I've got layers and layers, like one of my butterflies or the lunar moth, um, that takes longer. Um, if if I sawed like the piece that had the bird sawed out of the back. That was a, a longer process. Um, you know, if it's got multiple stones, but. Well, I, why don't you pick a piece and let's just have you figure, oh, is there a piece here where you can point to and say, I, it took me this many hours? I really don't think there's anything that took me less than five hours. <laughs> I can't imagine it. Yeah. If I did something like this, it'd be 35 hours. Yeah. Some and of it wouldn't look like this. Much, much longer. I mean, just for me to take it, an hour just to make that bezel, you know, and yeah. I don't, I don't think I'm slow. I'm methodical and I keep at it, but you know, this, this ring with all the little balls that kept falling off, that took a long time. Some, yeah. some things go together like, and I'm so happy. And those are the ones that I hate to let go. But this um, is just, I think out of everything you've shown me tonight, I am amazed with this clay turning into fine silver. Yeah. That is just so cool. I can't wait to get back in. And they are them. so, I mean, the, the finish and the feel, it's just nice. Yeah, Very I'm nice. be making all kinds of things out of that. Yeah. Well, Nola... We can't thank you enough for letting us to come into your thank studio. You this so is just much as a, a for letting me talk and talk and talk. Well, me. as a um a jewelry excessive procurer. No, I don't have to say excessive. No, there's nothing well, somebody excessive. in this room might say that, but um, I do appreciate <laughs> great jewelry, and I love the handmade jewelry. It, it's a little more delicate, so you have to be more careful. Um, uh, at least I, because I'm I'm like uh, all over it, but. It's just so nice to know some of the procedures that you take. I mean, when, when I go into Shamai, which is where I shop for my jewelry, um, Becca can tell me a little bit, or Michelle, or you if you're there, of, of what it what it's made of, but I didn't understand many of the processes. Mm -hmm. So this has just mm -hmm. been a wonderful journey of, of better understanding it. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for coming and letting me tell my all the little details well, that, that go into each piece. It's such a pleasure. So we can, if, if you are interested in any of her jewelry, um, check out Shamai Pottery at Loveless Cafe. Mm -hmm. The Frist, the Frist Center. Probably still has a few. They've money. reopened, yes, so we, yes. we're not so restocked there yet. John, I'm talking to you. It's time to buy some more. <laughs> <laughs> and you, did, did you tell me you were in, in Florida as well? In Florida and Barker Diamond. Barker Diamond, Diamond in Hillsborough Village. Has, so three places in Nashville. Yes. And, and then Nola Jane Studio online. So And do you have I a have, Facebook I page? A, I have a Facebook page. So, right. Yeah. Well, you have helped us uh, um, be the bookend of one year 
of what we consider to be wow. relentlessly curious, enticing oh shows. Yeah. And and we did. Awesome. We did. Two amazing Nashville artists. And next week, we're, we're going to do a little bit of a deviation from the arts. We're going to get a little bit to science. We've got the Ooh. former um, chief medical officer of Pfizer, who is um, Dr. Mace Rothenberg. He headed up the task force for COVID for Pfizer. Um, he just retired wow. at the end of March. And he's here. And he's retired back to Nashville, which is where we met him um, years ago. And Melissa um, Bunton, who is with Vanderbilt um, Medical Center. And they're going to help us do a little bit of a deep dive with kind of a community discussion on the COVID vaccine, not just the Pfizer one, but how it was developed, what we can all expect, and just better tools to work with. So we've been vaccinated. Do we need to wear a mask right, um, right. when you travel? All those things. So um, it's a little bit of a deviation. So we're going to do arts and science. And then they we are, the they do, because there is a science to the art and an art to the science. Yes. And then we've got so many other shows booked. So stay with us Thursday nights at seven o'clock. We've got so many wonderful shows coming up. Um, we haven't announced them yet, but Thursday night, Central Time, Community Arts of Bellevue, come to our Facebook page and click on at 7 o'clock on Thursdays. We're out of here. Nola, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you. <laughs> and thanks to our camera team here yes, and Matt. Matt, Glenn, and Tim. Thank you.